Hi, and thanks for watching this message video. Today we're continuing on in our series where we're looking at what Jesus taught his first disciples or followers about making followers, and we're approaching it as if Jesus gave them a recipe with nine different ingredients in it before sending them out to reach the world. In fact, here's exactly what Jesus said to them. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. So go and make followers of all people in the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have taught you, and I will be with you always, even until the end of this age. Now, when we look back on all of the things that Jesus taught these first followers or disciples prior to this moment, it would be easy to see that if there was a recipe that the first ingredient required is faith. And believe it or not, a little bit of faith goes a long way, which is probably the reason why Jesus used a mustard seed as an illustration of faith when teaching his disciples about it. For instance, here's what he said. Luke 17, 5 through 6. The apostles said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. The Lord answered, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. What Jesus was basically saying is that the recipe for making a follower doesn't require gobs and gobs of faith, like what most people think. All it requires is just a mustard seed size of faith. Or in other words, if you've ever used mustard seed inside of any kind of a recipe, you know that a little bit of it goes a long way. And that what God is ultimately wanting is not somebody who is overpowering, but somebody who has a distinct amount of trust or confidence in God with the way that they live their lives, which is the reason why God was using this metaphor and that he doesn't want somebody to be overpowering with the way that they are, but he definitely wants them to be distinct in the way that they live their lives for him. This is why faith is so critical and why the writer of the book of Hebrews tried to do a solid to God when explaining to everybody who was a Jew about the significance of faith. In fact, here's what he said. Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. Faith is the reason we remember great people who live in the past. It is by faith we understand that the whole world was made by God's command, so what we see was made by something that cannot be seen. It was by faith that Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. God said he was pleased with the gifts Abel offered and called Abel a good man because of his faith. Abel died, but through his faith he is still speaking. It was by faith that Enoch was taken to heaven so he would not die. He could not be found because God had taken him away. Before he was taken, the scripture says that he was a man who truly pleased God. Without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. If you've read the New Testament, then you know that the biggest deal that there is throughout it is actually faith in Christ. And it's no secret that throughout the Old Testament, many of the Israelites struggled with faith. In fact, if you've read it, then you know that an entire generation was eliminated by God because their lack of faith was so displeasing to God. And ultimately, when it comes to the New Testament, this is a theme that is carried out through. In fact, the very first time that faith is even mentioned in the New Testament is when Jesus is scolding those who call themselves followers for not having it. In fact, here's what he said. Matthew 6, 27 through 33. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Whenever we worry or show a lack of faith, this is displeasing to God. This is why faith needs to be the first ingredient in the entire recipe for both being a follower and making followers. And in a literal sense, we need to remember that faith is not something that we possess. It's not like a trophy. Faith is more like a mindset. It's a, a mental, cerebral way of thinking. And that God wants us to understand and have faith in him and his ways. And as we grow in our faith or our understanding of God's will, 
and our desire to accomplish it. This is how we become ultimately more useful to God, and believe it or not, God is investing into our faith to make it grow. In fact, look at what it is that that Paul wrote to the church in Colossae about the connection between our faith and our understanding of God's will and how God is investing into us to make sure that we'll be able to remain strong or patient in the midst of learning God's will. Colossians 1, 3 through 14. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we have heard about the faith you have in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all of God's people. You have this faith and love because of your hope, and what you hope for is kept safe for you in heaven. You learned about this hope when you heard the message about the truth, the good news that was told to you. Everywhere in the world, that good news is bringing blessings and is growing. This has happened with you too, since you heard the good news and understood the truth about the grace of God. You learned about God's grace from Epaphras, whom we love. He works together with us and is a faithful servant of Christ for us. He also told us about the love you have from the Holy Spirit. Because of this, since the day we heard about you, we have continued praying for you, asking God that you will know fully what he wants. We pray that you will also have great wisdom and understanding in spiritual things so that you will live the kind of life that honors and pleases the Lord in every way. You will produce fruit in every good work and grow in the knowledge of God. God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up when troubles come, but you will be patient. And you will joyfully give thanks to the Father who has made you able to have a share in all that he has prepared for his people in the kingdom of light. God has freed us from the power of darkness and he brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. The son paid for our sins and in him we have forgiveness. This truth that God is working in every follower to produce a stronger faith and a greater understanding of what his will is and then a desire to actually accomplish it wasn't just stated to the church in Colossae. Paul stated this to all the churches. In fact, he stated it in a more succinct way to the church in Philippi. Here's what he said. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So when it comes to being a follower of Christ or making followers of Christ, we have to remember or recognize that the number one ingredient has to be faith because without faith, nothing is pleasing to God and certainly God wants us to be pleasing to him. And again, faith is not a thing, it's a mindset. It's a way we think. And so when God is investing into us to develop our, our faith, we have to remember that this is primarily going to be a mental work, meaning God wants to change the way we think so that our faith in him will be strong and our understanding of God's will will increase. But even though God wants to change the way that we think, similar to the way that a parent wants to change the way that a child thinks, God does not force these changes on us. Instead, what he asks us to do is to allow him to make these cerebral changes within us mentally so that we can then be more useful to him and understand his will. For instance, look what Paul said about this. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Everyone should know, if you're a follower, that God's general will for all of us is that we would be farmers or that we would continue to spread the good news so that we would make followers. But that's hard. Farming's hard. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And from a recipe standpoint, it takes a lot of ingredients. And the first ingredient is faith. And because faith is not a thing, it's a mindset, this is something that God wants to develop inside of us, which means then that there are going to be times as he develops that and strengthens that within us, it's gonna feel like a mental test. And it might even come with things like food or clothing. But when this happens, we need to remember that this is God's way of, of strengthening us and making us capable of when we're facing things like troubles, that we'll still be able to do so with patience and with joy. James 1, 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. 